Thank you for checking out crypto.chartguys.com, the source for technical analysis in the cryptocurrency world. We are proud to announce our own crypto alert system designed to give you the most critical technical trading information possible no matter where you are. Keep your eyes on the market with mobile or email alerts for MACD crosses, RSI levels, and even inside bar alerts for dozens of coins across multiple exchanges. New features and proprietary chart guys indicators are already in development. Our alert system is very easy to customize and utilize, so don't hesitate to sign up for the most effective crypto trading tool on the market at crypto.chartguys.com. everyone settled in finally looking at the big three and we're going to start it off with bitcoin on bitfinex and everybody's talking about this you know huge spike in volume this is the one minute time frame so this is two one minute candlesticks the first one took out stop loss levels and saw the price dump we saw a quick recovery and then we saw an all-out dump and this one five minute candlestick has a range of over seven hundred dollars and that is pretty insane that's about a seven percent range that we saw in that one candlestick. So everybody wants to know what's happening. Why does that happen? And all we can do is speculate, which is why I don't put too much time and effort into that because we don't know the answer. It could be a number of things. Number one, it could be a mistake by a big whale trader. That's a less likely scenario where someone made a fat finger order and screwed up. That's a possibility though. Number two is someone was trying to trigger stop loss orders. You can see the, the dip that we saw when we look on the hourly time frame. The magnitude of that dip would have triggered a bunch of stop levels and have to zoom. Here we go. So we would have triggered any stops below 8,872. And if I were in a position playing this dip, my stop would have been below that level. So I could have potentially been stopped out. Fortunately, this happens on Bitfinex a lot more than GDAX. And it took a lot of volume to do that, obviously. But what that's another possibility. So triggering the stops and looking to accumulate on that move. And there's another one minute spike at a different point in time. So the bottom line is there's a lot of volume here on Bitfinex and it can trigger stops. And that's one reason that people don't like stops because you know it could be stop hunting where people are intentionally doing this to trigger those levels and potentially accumulate shares or cause uh, stop buys to sell shares and then go short. But either way, in either of those scenarios, the bottom line is the price didn't really do a whole lot after that. We've really settled in, which is surprising You know, for the next... 30 minutes, hour plus, we weren't too far off from where we were before all that wild action. So another possibility is just a large buy order. You know, if someone wants to buy 2000 Bitcoin in order for them to do that on the regular market, it takes a lot of scaling in and a lot of patience to do that without just, you know, huge market orders, which again, these were huge market orders, which is why there is OTC orders over the counter, which is where whales should go to be buying their orders and to be get them in, in single blocks rather than have to trade on the open market to get them. So another number of reasons of what it could have potentially been, but the bottom line is a ton of market orders were triggering. I'm sure the bots were going crazy as well in the algos. And at a certain point, we absolutely cleared out all of the asks and all of the bids in a $700 range. And the price moved a whole lot easier through that range. Once this initial one minute candlestick took out a lot of those levels and those orders. So again, bottom line, I'm not losing sleep over this. It would be great if we knew what happened. We will never know. Well, maybe not never, but we're not going to know for sure what happened. So I'm not going to sit here trying to speculate. I'm just going to continue to trade and continue to use these signals that technical analysis has been giving us. So let's now go to Bitcoin on the daily time frame. We have our high of the bull move and our pullback low of consolidation. And now we're seeing the bulls ride exponential support and try and head back to our recent high with key resistance of 9,763. That is the level to be watching for now because that's the only resistance nearby. The four hour time frame saw a bull break. And this is a good example of an equilibrium pattern that I am not comfortable getting in on because it's not the ideal setup. This is not the trade coming to me. The trade coming to me back here was perfect. We went over that in a, a video two days ago, and that's worth watching if you didn't see it but a perfect equilibrium pattern, perfect bull entry and follow through. But this bull break, look at this move where we formed our higher low at 8,863 and the bull break occurred at 9,369. So essentially the bulls had already pushed the price up $500 in about 14 hours. And so when we get the bull break of the key resistance, there's no built up pressure. And what I mean by that is there's no really tight range. There's no 
uh, clear level of shorts covering because shorts have been covering over the last 12 hours. There's no clear level of bulls saying, all right, ready to go because bulls have been buying for the last 12 hours. So the ideal scenario for me, if the trade were going to have come to me, it would have been our high, low. We would have set a lower high, higher low, and then a bull break getting really tight. Because this bull break had already occurred after $500 of upside, I sat it out and I did not make an entry on that bull break. The risk to reward was not in favor. And it's the kind of scenario where I'm not going to lose anything if the price keeps going up without me and I made a mistake by not entering. Again, the mistakes I want to make are mistakes where I leave money on the table, not where I give anything back. If my goal is to have more money than yesterday, then by sitting out of a position that I am uncomfortable in, I'm certainly not going to backtrack and take a step back from yesterday. So just being cautious and patient and watching the four-hour inside bar that's currently forming. Also noting the hourly time frame. The hourly chart, trying to form a bull flag here, holding exponential support on this consolidation. So now this exponential moving average, the 12 period, is our guide to see if the bulls can remain in full control. We have our high, low, and potentially a lower high tightening hourly range to be watching. So the range to be watching into tonight on Bitcoin is this hourly high of 9,447. If that breaks, it's only psychological resistance to the recent high in the 9,700s. And our key support is the hourly higher low of 9,252. If we lose that level, we then have a lower high and a lower low. And that will tell me that we're likely to see a daily equilibrium where we have our high, low, and potentially a lower high. And then we'll look to see the range continue to tighten. So Overall, I'm in no rush to enter a position on Bitcoin. I do have a position in Ethereum. We'll go over a little bit. And this was a scenario where I just saw the healthy hourly consolidation. I saw the bulls hold the exponential moving averages. And I said, all right, I'll take an initial position on Ethereum just in case we do get a bull break and continuation. I'm not going to be on the computer tonight. So I got my stop loss set. And if the bulls see continuation, I will see some benefit. But that's only a partial position. And I'm only going in all in positions when I'm extremely confident in the setup, which I'm not at this current point. So that's the hourly range to be watching on Bitcoin. So Ethereum, highlighting how Ethereum is slightly more bullish with the correlation, although at this point they're pretty even with where we stand. We have the high of the day or the bull move, 711. We have support at 578.75 on the daily chart. And the question is, can we break and see continuation on the daily or do we set a lower high and have to pull back and form a higher low? Right now the bulls are in full control of this market and there's no doubt about that at this point. And we are looking to continue that as long as everything stays as it is. If we see a spike in bear volume and some significant pullback, that will change things. But that's not the case right now. So the hour, uh, four-hour time frame, high, low, lower high, higher low, bull break. But again, not a lot of follow-through because the bull break had occurred after 12 hours of green and the price had already moved about $50. So I want to see a bull move after the price has moved, you know, $10, $15, not $50, because that means there's limited upside. And look at the volume on the bull break. It's not standing out, whereas the volume that we had on the bull break on the hourly time frame two days ago in that video I was talking about, that bull break had a clear spike in volume on it. Not the case this time around. So the range to be watching on Ethereum into tonight, same, same layout as Bitcoin, 693.15, higher low on the hourly, 676 exponential moving average support is holding if we break 693.15 we're looking at 700 psychological and then 711 if we break 676 the low we're looking down at 661.37 as the next level and again the potential that would increase the chances let's get rid of these lines but it would increase the chances that the daily chart is now going to give us an equilibrium with our high low and if we top out and lose the hourly higher low pattern, we'll set a lower high on the daily and look to consolidate back down to the daily exponential moving averages. So again, it's one of those scenarios that certainly favors the bulls where worst case at this point, unless there's a, a dump on FUD news, the worst case is that we're going to set a lower high on the daily and continue in a daily tightening pattern that is favoring the bulls as long as the exponential moving averages are support. Litecoin, same deal, except some big differences in the sense that we have we did have inside bars the inside bar broke bearish by 29 cents certainly not a convincing break but litecoin is standing out as the laggard again it is the weakest of the three and the correlation favors the bears the high is 165.87 the low is 138.80 but look at this four hour time frame this is the kind of equilibrium pattern i was looking for on bitcoin it would have made things nice we're still tight if we set a lower high here and pull back and form a higher low we're gonna have a very tight pattern look at the consistent declining volume as the range tightens up and the range right now to be watching is 145 to 154.65. If we set this lower high, higher low will be anticipated. 
and wishing that that was what we were seeing on Bitcoin just because it would make an easier trade and it would be the kind of setup where I would have the confidence to go all in if we did get a bull break. Hourly time frame for Litecoin, similar setup, but just at a different point on the broader time frames. And we actually did just get a higher high here. So maybe this is Litecoin playing catch up a little bit. The hourly chart got a higher high, but of course the four hour chart far away from breaking bullish like we did on Ethereum and Bitcoin already. So again, I don't even need to look at the pairings of LTC, BTC. I just need to look at Litecoin and say it's still four hour, lower high, higher lows. And Bitcoin very clearly already broke to a four hour higher high as did Ethereum. So that's where we stand as we head into tonight. The bulls are definitely comfortable in positions. If you are in swing positions, you're either using the four hour higher low that was established last night, or you are using the hourly time frame if you want to ensure locking in some gains. But as long as this four hour higher low pattern is intact, the bulls have control on the daily time frame. We're going to have to see a clear bear break. Remember, uh, we did not break key support on Bitcoin on this four hour time frame. We did break a couple levels that were established of support. But really, it's this double low down at 8,600. So the bottom line is the bulls have full control. We're looking at the potential of either continuation to higher highs on the daily or potential for a rejection, an inability to break that resistance and consolidation to form a higher low and a daily equilibrium pattern. And tonight is going to determine which we see. So I appreciate you watching. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at uh, altcoins and we'll do BCH again tomorrow and taking member votes. So we'll have a, a half dozen or so to be looking at and probably go live tomorrow as well. And I'll give a, a few hour heads up. Usually do that in the afternoon, perhaps around 4 p.m. Eastern. We'll be looking to do that. And again, I'll give plenty of heads up. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you all continue to do good things out there. There's certainly never ending good things that we can be doing. And let's see, yesterday I hooked up the good old boy tow truck and good old boy mechanic that uh, helped me out a lot and allowed me to get back on the road rather than having to spend the night in the middle of nowhere. So definitely appreciated that help and uh, extended that appreciation. And that's that. Well, I'm heading to see Yanni on the water outdoor amphitheater. I'm pumped. And tomorrow, we'll see where we stand. Appreciate it all. See you soon.